Hey y'all, it's Emily. Today I'm doing a video about ghost hunting, like the general knowledge about ghost hunting, part of the paranormal knowledge series videos kinds of things. A couple weeks ago I did a general paranormal knowledge about ghosts and I actually got feedback to whoever asked. I have a brief knowledge of dark spirits because I was asked about dark spirits and aliens. I have a brief knowledge about dark spirits but no experience at all. Have you ever noticed any unexplained scratches or claw marks or been attacked by a ghost? Actually, n no. I checked um, after I got went ghost hunting both times that I did because and somebody at the second place we went to somebody did get scratched but I didn't get scratched or anything. Aliens, my favorite alien movie, Dark Skies. I'd probably have to say Dark Skies because that was a really good movie. And then the rest is about dreams or visions being abducted by aliens. Nope. And no, <laughs> no, not much experience with aliens there or alien abduction. So sorry to disappoint, but thank you for the questions. I very much appreciate it. The first one, this one should be a given, and I say should be, but sometimes people don't have common sense. Um, you need to be serious and you need to be completely sober with doing this. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't like go afterwards and to a bar or something, but you have to like, you have to be like focused on what you are doing. Patience is a virtue, especially with ghost hunting. When I went, I spent an hour, we spent an hour standing in the basement with nothing happened. And I mean, you just have to, you can't get impatient and want something to happen because chances are, you know, there's a chance that something might not happen. You need to be professional because this is not, let's grab an Ouija board and do not touch Ouija boards. Do not do it. Um, and just like be sillier, do something, you know, trying to be stupid. Yeah. Just don't. It's a professional, it, like you have to be professional to do this and it's not, um, you don't goof around when you do this. It is like there are several, several groups that are completely serious and professional and this is like sometimes it's what they do for their jobs so you just need to n not, you know, you need to stay professional because, I mean, if you goof off you might as well just not investigate. And this, um, I didn't know until I took a paranormal class, but people don't pay you to go to their houses or place or museums or whatever to investigate. You pay them. Like I had to um, pay for both of the places that I went to investigate, like the entire group did. And that's just, um, what do you say? That's just proper etiquette with this thing. You do not and if somebody offers you money, you do not take it. You don't. Make sure you have proper equipment. There's, um, I think ghostop.com is a place where you can get uh, the equipment for it. But like, even just like, you could get, if you have like a digital camera or a video camera, you could use those or you could use like your voice notes memo thingy on your phone or uh, you can download voice recording apps or something. I mean you don't have to have like specifically expensive stuff unless you're wanting to get like K2 meters or IR cams. If any session you're doing, whether you're doing like a flashlight session or EVP session or if you get someone them to like knock on the wall or something, you need to leave enough space between your questions so that way they have time to answer, whether it's turning on the flashlight or, you know, speaking into the recorder or knocking on 
whatever. If you want to make sure that the ants, because it they need the energy, you have to build up energy to answer however they're going to answer, and you don't want it to be like, um, you, you want to make sure you know which question that they're answering. With clothes, you need to wear, like, clothes that don't make a noise when you, and clothes and shoes that are, first of all, comfortable, and second of all, don't make a noise when you, like, walk or move. Like, you don't want to have, like, one of those breaker jackets that go every time you move. And you don't want, like, heels or shoes that go clonk, 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 because that'll, I mean, if you're recording and that, you'll hear that and think something is there when there's, when it's just what you're wearing. You don't want to go alone either, like, in general. If your group is separating and, like, going out to investigate, you always want to at least have a partner with you. So that, um, just, first of all, just for safety. So that way if somebody gets hurt, somebody, the other person can either call for help or go get help or something like that. Or, and then also because if something does happen, it sounds more credible coming from two different pe two people rather than just one person because I could go and say you know I could say something happened and if I'm alone then they will probably won't believe me as much as if somebody else was with me and said that they experienced that too. Always do your research so you know first of all you know what you're going into and what you have to deal with and also just knowing the history that has quite that has an effect on um, if there is any activity, it has an effect on what kind of activity it is. Like, for one of the investigations, it was during the Civil War, and one of the ghosts we believe is a bushwhacker. Um, but I mean, you, everybody knows, like, when you read ghost stories or read about hauntings, that there is history and there's a story from history, which is the reason why the place is being haunted. So always make sure that you know that before you go, which can also help you during your investigation and during questions and everything. And then the last thing is kind of sounds a little strange probably because you don't see this on um, sh on like the ghost hunting shows, but you do like a cleansing ceremony or a closing prayer or something, which basically you're just uh, and telling the spirits that they cannot go with you they have to stay where they are and that way nothing attaches itself to you or and follows you away. Um, when I went my professor he works with Native American tribes so he had a um, smoked cedar and waved the smoke like around all of us while also saying you were not allowed to come with us you must stay here you cannot attach yourself to us but I mean you could also do like depending on what kind of religion you were in you could do just like a prayer or something similar to that that was the general what you should know before ghost time give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel so you get notified when more videos are posted all my social media links are down there in the description so go check those out Actually, I'm gonna fix this camera. Okay. Okay. I did not set that up square. Okay. And, um. Oh, what else was it? Hold on. Maybe. <laughs> I am just not doing well with the camera setup at all today. Okay. Uh, crap, what's it called? Uh, infrared. And for IR cam, sorry. Oh, what is that thing called? No, I'm not going to remember the name of that one. What is it called? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to think of it like in the middle of class or something. Door, window, wind, the bed. <laughs> wall, knocking on the wall. You're <laughs> because.